record's first death from COVID-19. More cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria as figures now exceed 4,000. Plus, Lagos governor issues threat on reimposing lockdown in Nigeria's commercial city. This and more Panorama Today. I'm Ian Ray John. Welcome. Nigeria is now having 4,399 coronavirus cases. The latest figures released by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control indicate that 248 new infections were established in 17 states. In the breakdown of the new infections, Lagos has 81, Jigawa 35, Bonu and Kano 26, Itch, Bochi 20, FCT 13, Edo 12, Sokoto 10, Zamfara 7, Kwara and Kebi 4, H, Gombe, Ogun, and Taraba, 2 H, while Bayelsa and Oshun have one case, F H. Similarly, 778 cases have been discharged, and those who died of the virus in Nigeria are 143 as at 10th of May 2020. And report just in from Ondo State says that the first death from coronavirus pandemic has been confirmed. The Commissioner for Health in the state, Dr. Wahab Adegwero, announced this earlier today in Akure. The state governor will later today brief newsmen of the incident as well as efforts at curbing further spread of the virus in the state. Now, Lagos State Governor Babajide Somwondo has threatened to take tougher actions and reimpose total lockdown on the state if flouting of the gradual easing of guidelines on COVID-19, which began on Monday, May 4th, continues. The governor said this in a statewide broadcast on the update of COVID-19 at Government House Marina, Lagos. Nusa Usula brings us details. Governor Somwondo described as unacceptable the poor compliance level with the COVID-19 protocols, including physical and social distancing, wearing of face masks, not exceeding 60% carriage capacity in public transportation, especially by the yellow commercial buses, all of which were meant to check the spread of the coronavirus in the state. The governor also directed the police to immediately begin confiscation of commercial motorcycles for failure to vacate the roads this period as earlier directed. People need to take responsibility. People have to take responsibility. This face mask wearing is to protect yourself. You have to help us protect you and protect your loved ones. The governor also ordered security agencies to turn back vehicles violating the restriction imposed on interstate movements of persons. Governor Songwulu reiterated that while trucks carrying essential items and foodstuffs are allowed, those having with them more than seven persons would also be turned back. In Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. And from Lagos, we head to Bochi, where the government has refuted claims that people in Azari, Katagum, local government area are dying from coronavirus complications. The chairman, Bochi State Task Force on COVID-19, Baba Teller, refuted claims while briefing newsmen on issues emanating from Azari. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports that a journalist in Bochi has also tested positive for COVID-19. Of five to six death daily, the chairman denied claims that over 300 people have died from COVID-19 complications in Azari. with an increase of over 100 patients within two weeks across the state. Some patients are expected to be discharged by next week. In Bauchi, Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad, NTA News. 
Meanwhile, Kano State is making steady progress in COVID-19 response in the last few weeks. This was acknowledged by the leader of the ministerial task team in the state, Dr. Nasiru Sani Guazo, during a media briefing in Kano. Abdullahi Mustafa has details. Since the confirmation of the first case of COVID-19 in Kano, the tax force committee constituted by the state government has been holding periodic media briefing to update the public. This involves presentation from various subcommittees and relevant stakeholders. We have received quite a number of uh, items from individuals and organizations, including that of the Federal Government, Your Excellency. While the state continues to record more cases, 32 patients have been discharged and many more awaiting their follow-up test results. Since the beginning of this outbreak, we have infection among health workers amounting to 47. More measures are, however, been in place to flatten the curve. Now all the three testing centers are operating. And the next issue that we have embarked upon is to ensure adequate supply of some these and other efforts leader of the ministerial task team sent to Kano to support the COVID-19 response acknowledged are making significant impact. The response is improving, quality of care will improve, and people's lives will be safe. Members of the task force, however, expressed displeasure over non-compliance with the lockdown order in some parts of the state. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NT News. We head to Plateau State now where the number of COVID-19 cases have risen to 17. Governor Simon Bakola Long is asking citizens of the state not to panic but to continue to strictly adhere to regulations put in place to contain the disease and curtail community spread. The governor was speaking in an interview at his official residence at Ewood Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. Priscilla Guruman reports. Governor Lalong, while responding to the rise in the number of cases, said the development calls for concerted efforts to achieve effective contact tracing and stop community transmission, which is now the major challenge. He urged citizens of the state to continue to comply with the guidelines for restriction of movement, use of face masks, and maintaining social distancing and observing personal hygiene and sanitation requirements. My advice to people is that not to be afraid because this is the time to trace it. And if we trace them, we isolate them, we, 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 we keep them, and they are, they are getting well. The first index case in Plateau State is over. The girl is now back to her family. And we are hoping that even these ones, if they keep on to regulations, we we'll keep them, it will be over. But the best thing is good to identify it to know the level of the spread. Governor Lalong also described as unfortunate the situation where some people violate laid down regulations aimed at tackling the virus and also tried to persuade others to disregard government directives on the basis that COVID-19 is not real. There are some people saying that it is false. For me, COVID-19 is not false. I just lost two friends yes, two days ago. One in Lagos, one in Bauchi. And for people to imagine that this this virus is not existing in Nigeria, I think they will not be uh, fair to uh, to the lives of those people. The state chief executive also reminds the public that the total lockdown in the state earlier relaxed will resume midnight of Sunday, 10th May 2020, and violators will be arrested and prosecuted, urging all to comply with government directives. In Jos, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. Now joining me live from Jaws and adherence to interstate travel ban into the state as a result of COVID-19 as a Plateau State Commissioner for Information, Dan Manjang. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. First COVID-19 uh, case in Plateau State was traced to compromise interstate travel ban. What is the situation now considering the many routes that lead to the state? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, that has been very, very worrisome to us because, as a state, because most of the cases of the 17 cases that we have had, uh, not less than 10 have been due to travel routes. Some have been uh, due to the fact that uh, we have traced, due to contact tracing. 
Uh, as I talk to you right now, uh, at the border points, about eight border points that we have, we have installed even CCTV cameras there. As I talk to you right now, the governor is uh, uh, on fact finding. He is going to uh, tour around this, uh, this border points, uh, entry points to, to Joss. Uh, he is starting with the one uh, bordering the, the um, local government, uh, that is the one on the road to Abuja. But I can assure you that uh, a lot of uh, measures are being taken. Uh, we, uh, we have put barricades in some of the roads, and so that is where we are. But the most unfortunate thing is that uh, the, the blame could be twofold. Uh, we, even though we are not here for blame games, but for the people that the responsibility has been for them to make sure that people don't go in and out of Plateau State is one point. Secondly, for the commercial people or for the drivers that take these people uh, around, uh, they know that they, they, there, are, there, are, uh, there are areas that we have said it should not be so. It is backed by executive orders and the executive orders are being implemented. We have uh, mobile courts all over the place, which have tried over 1,000 people by now. And so uh, we are really, as a government, taken aback by what is happening at the borders, and that is why His Excellency uh, Dr. Simon Bakolalong has undertaken to go to these border points himself to assess the situation uh, pending uh, the next line of action that will be taken. It looks like uh, you're doing so much, uh, but what is the government doing uh, to uh, curtail the spread of the virus in the state at this uh, point? Well, the most important thing is to make sure that uh, people don't roam about. We have a standing order on the plateau, people now know, that we lock down uh, from morning to, from Monday to Thursday night, and then we we allow people to go about their normal duties from Thursday night to Sunday night. It is a routine. It is a standing order for now. Uh, we embark on social distancing. We emphasize on need. We have banned the festivities and anniversaries. We have also banned some markets that we think they used to attract huge outlay of people. And so that is what we are doing. And we are determined to do more. We assess based on the situation that we find ourselves. It has to be one step at a time so that uh, people will also see with us. So that by the time we take the next line of action, people will be able to say yes, that indeed there was a consideration uh, for places that have locked down for 14 days, for example, it is as a result of non-compliance. Uh, so far on the plateau, there is a lot of compliance. We put the compliance at 90 percent, 90 to 95 percent compliance. Uh, and so we are where we are. That is why probably the number has been that low. Uh, 17, the, the greatest one, that the shocker that we got was that we got nine people that proved positive, uh, 10 people that proved positive in one day. Apart from that, uh, we've not had any case, like you had the governor say, the index case has, in, has even been, uh, been discharged. And so all these, the, 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 the patients are responding to treatment. None of them has reached a stage that he will have to use ventilators or any equipment like that. And so uh, they have been taking... Uh, all right, thank you uh, so much. Uh, just before we let you go, uh, you know, community transmission is uh, the main issue in Nigeria at the moment. Uh, I don't know, is the state involved in the grassroots in the fight against COVID-19 just so that the numbers do not increase? Uh, uh, veterinary Research, National Veterinary Research Institute in Vom is doing quite well. Uh, it's testing and uh, having sleepless nights to make sure that people uh, don't contact this virus. And the hand washing, the hygiene that we are emphasizing, uh, the Ministry of Health is doing quite a lot. We are working with our communities. The communities have this uh, organization called PIDAN, which organizes 53 ethnic groups on the plateau. And we are doing serious sensitization. And the people have imbibed, the local government chairman 
are doing very well in this regard. Thank you so much, Commissioner for Health, the Plateau State, Dan Majang. This is Panorama, live on the network service of the NTA. Time for a break. Do stay. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us. Working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA, growing with the nation. Together, no matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one. Let's live together. Let's stop fighting each other. Let us live as one. No matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one, let's live together. How can we develop when we're always in crisis? Families have become refugees in their country. No matter our differences, show some understanding. No matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one, let's live together. Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel. Let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, good people, great nation. you back. The need for people to avoid contracting COVID-19 has again been re-echoed on Good Morning Nigeria. Medical experts say contracting the virus could lead to death, especially in patients with underlying ailments. The guests, while discussing COVID-19 and underlying ailments, reiterated the need to observe all protocols mitigating spread. Lydia Sampson reports. Patients with chronic diseases before COVID-19 could hitherto manage the ailments for years. Ironically, if such patients contract COVID-19, the underlying ailment heightens, leading to death. The guests therefore stress the need for planning with other experts on management of COVID-19 patients with underlying illnesses, which they say present severe cases. COVID-19, I would want to call it the accelerator of death in these patients with comorbidities. Okay, like Dr. Bello mentioned earlier on, a patient has cancer, the patient is managing his cancer. Maybe the two, the two year survival is about 10%, five year survival is about maybe 1% or whatever. And then the patient now gets COVID-19 and the patient dies in three days. Try to remove that fear, fear of getting infected when they go to the hospital. Uh, because the hospitals ideally should have triage areas where patients will be triaged to go to uh, where the non-COVID patients are seen and if they are high-risk patients, they are referred to where COVID patients are seen. So they should practice all those hygiene, uh, uh, the hygiene, uh, the social distancing, the put of, putting of masks, the not mingling with people, not coming out of their houses and, when, and taking their medication because chronic illness means that they have on medication, either antihypertensives or anti-diabetics or they are taking some medication for the chronic illness. So they should make sure they adhere 
to their drugs. They also urge government and other stakeholders to intensify efforts at establishing intensive care units in hospitals and isolation centers for specified treatments. Now, if you have cancer, it will be expected that it is not only the the COVID-19 that is going to be treated. You should involve a cancer specialist in the treatment of that patient. The same thing goes for um, somebody that have a COPD, that you will involve a pulmonologist in the management of that patient. Any condition that will make you come down with a severe form or, um, I mean, suffer a severe form of the disease, those are the people who will be needing um, hospitalizations, the ones who are likely to go to the ICU, the, long, the ones who are likely to be needing ventilators, uh, mechanical ventilation. To mitigate community spread, they are unanimous that the use of personal protecting equipment PPEs amongst health workers must be intensified with government support. This, they say, will go a long way in protecting health workers so they can serve society better. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. To curb community spread of COVID-19, Ekiti state government has tightened security at its boundaries with other states while making effort to procure testing equipment to enhance the fight against the virus. The State Commissioner for Health and Human Services, Dr. Mojisola Yaya Kolade, gave the indication at a state COVID-19 task force press briefing in Adoikiti. Ayodeji Ugushakin reports that with three new cases in the state, the need to cushion the effects of the lockdown on indigent persons informs more palliatives being distributed. Among the non-pharmaceutical interventions to curb the community transmission of COVID-19 in the state is the interstate boundary closure. The rate at which some people are still finding their ways to the state, however, become worrisome, which the task force decried with the belief that for the fight against the pandemic to be won, people must adhere strictly to the various measures set by government. <laughs> The Health Commissioner said government is making efforts to procure more testing equipment and explained that those tested positive to the virus in the state are responding to treatment while efforts are on to prevent further spread. Meanwhile, more people have benefited from the food palliative to cushion the hardship caused by the lockdown in the state. At a palliative presentation by the special advisors to the state governor on federal matters, about 5,000 people benefited from the donation. Pandemic of the virus that is actually killing people, and it is our responsibility to be able to educate the people on the need to wash their hands, wear face masks, and also observe uh, social distance. The people were equally sensitized on the need to follow the various precautionary means to fight the virus. From Adekiti, Ayodi Jogunshaki. News. And in Taraba, the National Youth Service Corps has donated personal protective equipment and other kits to Taraba State Government as part of efforts to curb spread of COVID-19. Joseph Zana Gambu reports that the equipment were presented to the State Governor, Darius Ishako. This personal protective equipment and other kits presented to Governor Darius Dixon Ishaku are locally produced by the core members who gain various skills through the skills acquisition training provided for them on camp. Governor Ishaku expressed satisfaction that the NYSC has risen to the challenge posed by the COVID-19 pandemic by channeling their expertise in the production of preventive equipment to support government in its efforts at curbing the spread of the virus. One of the ways we can curb it or reduce it is if we have testing equipment. For now, we don't have in Germany. We understand there is a mobile testing equipment of which we have indicated that we are interested. Governor Ishaku, who expressed optimism that the state will soon receive delivery of mobile testing equipment, admonished people of the state to try and minimize the spread of the virus by keeping strictly to all safety guidelines prescribed by authorities. In Jalingu, Joseph Zanagambo, NTA News. 
And with um, COVID-19, 17 bandits operating in parts of Kaduna State have been killed in joint clearance involving troops of Operation Thunderstrike and Well Stroke, with support from the air component of Operation Gamma Aiki. A statement by the Coordinator Defense Media Operations, Major General John Ineche, indicates that the criminals were eliminated from the hideouts around Mashigi, Gabi and Kabarasha villages in Guaguada district of Chukun Luka government of Kaduna state. Major General Inerche notes that three empty houses and a church building at Kabarasha village were partially damaged during the encounter. The armed forces regrets the unfortunate incident that have set up a panel in liaison with the Kaduna state government to investigate the occurrence with a view to provide compensation. The statement commends the public for their support and enjoined them to regularly provide credible information mission that will facilitate the operations of the armed forces. And away from security, a few days after a tanker accident on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, another fuel laden truck has caused an explosion in an accident involving two other vehicles killing a yet to be identified woman. With eyewitnesses say the woman, a passerby, was burnt to death. The body of the victim has been deposited at a private morgue in Shagamu by operatives of Ogun State Traffic Compliance and Enforcement Agency, while the resultant gridlock has also been cleared. And that's Panorama today. Many thanks for watching. Please do remain safe. Special tax force on COVID-19 are effective from 4th May 2020 in Abuja, Lagos and Ogun States. For public spaces, 